Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the workbench. I'm Dan, as always, and we're here, and we're looking at another new project that I'm going to get started. Uh, and it is the Exact Rail Gunderson Woodchip Car Project that I've been uh, kind of working on here lately, uh, converting these cars uh, into Hainesport Industrial Railway C&D gondolas. Uh, these cars are basically converted with new metal sides compared to the composite sides. All the uh, original prototypes were XGPSX prototypes. Uh, Exactrail did make these cars at one point in time, but they're really hard to find. So I'm using the recent release that they have, uh, the Southern Pacific paint scheme here, uh, to do the cars with. And it's fine. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Uh, these cars are very easy to work with and patch, so I'm perfectly fine with that. So I went ahead and got actually five of these cars. And I wasn't planning on doing a video of these, but someone had asked if I could show some techniques on the weathering on these, because it is pretty interesting. I'll go ahead and show you guys a prototype uh, that I've already done up, so you guys can get an idea of the weathering that I'm actually going to be doing, and the paint and everything else. This is basically what we're going to be making here, is the HIRR patch-out cars uh, that have the really neat, uh, fresh patching on the base of the car, where they re-stenciled all the data, uh, put new safety stripes, and stuff like that at the bottom and then you have the beat up sides, gouged sides uh, all the nice details patching and everything else uh, they're really really neat cars I see these on a regular basis on the CND trash trains that come out of Fostoria, Ohio and these cars are a very very common prototype and I wanted to model one and it's nice that Xactrail re-released these cars so I can do them now so this is basically what we're making it's a very unique prototype uh, in the CND industry, but it's a cool car in that in a lot of respects. I especially like the patching, but basically I'm going to be showing you in this video how to do all the weathering, all the mud splatter, the gouging, scratching, the custom patching like this, decaling, everything like that. Uh, and then of course we'll install a load in it and get it all weathered up. So I know I said I was going to do the Railbox video first uh, before I did any more how-to videos, but because I have these cars and because... I'm finishing off. We'll do a quick peek at the uh, prototype photos of one of the cars that I want to model. This one here is in active service. Uh, it was pictured as of 2016 with the fresh patching that I was uh, wanting to replicate in particular so I can kind of show you some patching effects. Uh, and this is where that kind of ties in. A lot of people ask me about how I do some of my patching so this is actually going to be a really good model to demonstrate some of my patching effects uh, in detail so I can't wait to get to that part. But anyway here's the prototype. You can see it's patched for HIRR with the number 4357R1. Uh, these cars all have an R1 designation on them, which is very interesting. And you can see the sides and ends are all very beat up. Uh, but recently they went back and started upgrading these cars with some fresh patching like this. Uh, Renumbered them, re-lettered them, added CND load levels, the white stripe to Im indicate the center brace of the car. Uh, but the rest of it, instead of doing a full repaint, they just patched the bottom half of the car to cover up graffiti and put new data on. And the rest of it is all very grimy, so you got tons of rust pitting. Notice the fading, all the garbage juice splatter, and all the rust. That's what we're going to be trying to replicate. Uh, but this gives you a good idea of the kind of car that we're going to be replicating here. So looking at the model here, all we really got to do is pretty much uh, do some masking, remove some things, and basically patch up the Southern Pacific lettering. I don't plan on doing a complete strip down of this paint job. The reason being, uh, we got some data on the end that I want to save because no one makes a decal set for this. Also, this would be hard to paint, but all this white on the end is accurate and all this data is accurate for the modern prototype so I want to be able to preserve this. All we're going to do is scrape off this lettering and we'll mask all this off and then paint the rest of the car black and then we'll be able to finish touching up the white if we need to on the ends here. But I want to preserve that so that's one of the reasons I don't want to have to strip the paint off is I want to preserve all this data and everything on the end because we can reuse that. Um, the only thing other than that, um, I know exact real cars don't exactly strip very well because the plastic can be a little bit soft, so I want to try to be careful of that. All I'm going to do to start with, though, is I'm going to go ahead and start painting all the sides and everything, like just where the white lettering is, black. I want to get that all covered up, that way it doesn't bleed through the black paint that I spray on these. I'm going to be doing a spray can job on these as well because the paint jobs on these cars are pretty ratty, and I want to kind of uh, replicate that by using just spray cans for this project to keep things simple. Jumping right into this here, I have my Anita's black paint and I'm going to be using this to patch up the Southern Pacific lettering. I'm going to be using a very fine liner brush here to just go over in and add some relatively thick black acrylic marks to uh, black out this Southern Pacific lettering. Any Southern Pacific guys watching this, turn your heads now. 
uh, because I am not going to be preserving this SP paint, unfortunately. All this data on the ends as well is going to get covered up, so I'm just going in with a relatively thick coat of paint and covering this all up. I'm keeping my uh, brush strokes pretty flat, that way I make sure the paint's nice and evenly covered here. But hit all these little markings up and get rid of them. So like I said, um, I want to try to preserve this white patch here because it actually has the correct markings for this car. And I really don't want to have to redecal those, uh, especially when they're right there and I can just preserve them. So what I'm going to do, all I need to do is remove the original reporting mark and then I'll just come back later and uh, redecal this. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto blade and just go in here and start scraping off some of this lettering. The X-Acto rail printing is pretty easy to take off, so it doesn't take that much effort to... Uh, get the lettering off, but both the SP reporting mark and the number are going to come off here. You can see the numbers off there. Now I'll go ahead and do the SP next. Being careful not to scratch in the paint. I'm just gliding across the surface with the blade, basically. And that's it. That's pretty much it. I'll just repeat this process for the uh, opposite side. So I'm going to be removing this internal bracing here. The uh, modernized Hainsport cars uh, no longer have the style of internal bracing. They have a pipe that runs in between the center of the car to support the sides. So I'm going to be trimming these back also for the sake of installing a load later. I'm just going to be using a brand new chisel blade to carefully trim that piece back and then just cut that little section of it off. Next step here is to add some internal bracing, which is the new style of internal bracing, which is just a pipe. And I have some uh, styrene dowel rod that I've cut to size, and these are basically going to fit inside the car on the rib right here on both sides. So all you gotta do is insert them in like that. I just take a little bit of glue in this case some uh, plastic cement and I hit them on the side and tack them in place. I'll repeat this process for the other rib on this side as well. So we got the ribs installed now uh, and we're pretty much ready to go. So we got the internal bracing installed and this is not only going to be the new support for the car size but it'll also be what will support the load when we add it later on. Um, in addition to that we got all the patching done on the sides that we need to do and then I have the ends taped off to preserve that data that I want to save. And I'm not going to worry about masking these corner gussets off or anything like that. I can touch those up later just because it would be too much of a hassle to get the paint on. So these are supposed to be quick paint jobs, so we're not going to go into too much on that. Just a quick basic masking on the uh, larger area to cover that. Everything else will touch up. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and take the couplers and trucks off for painting, and we'll swap the trucks out get those painted separately and then I'll put some shop trucks as I call them on this model so we can actually paint. Okay we're back at the bench now. Here's the car. I got a couple coats of uh, the black on there. It's looking pretty good. Um, I just did a couple basic coats. Uh, I use a really nice dull black spray paint that I get from Walmart. Uh, it's like their basically their line of spray paint. I don't remember what it is. It's like a picture clear or something. I forget. Anyway, um, the paint covers very nice, and it doesn't take too much to uh, cover all this brown. It's a pretty easy color to uh, match. You'll notice I kind of blasted through all these steps too, and that's just because you guys have seen me paint enough cars and do that kind of thing enough times that you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. We're just basically doing a quick paint job on these, and again, it's a rough paint job, and that's on purpose for the sake of weathering. At this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off the shop trucks. We'll go ahead and put all of the parts back on, like the couplers, the stock trucks. We'll get all that put on, and then we're going to go ahead and start actually weathering this thing and getting it prepped. Now, I know a lot of you are wondering, well, wait, Daniel, you haven't put decals on here. You haven't done this and that. Well, to do the patch job on this car, what I want to do is actually weather the sides first to achieve the faded effect that these cars get, they have all of that concrete and drywall dust basically caked all over the sides of the car and it dulls them down and makes them look really crappy. Those black glossy patches, are, I want them to stand out. So what I'm going to do is put the first coat of fade over all this first 
and then I'll go back and add all the patches. I could airbrush this, but I want to do this by hand because, again, these are very noticeable streaks of uh, drywall compound. I call it garbage juice, basically. It's concrete dust, garbage juice, that kind of thing. So I'm going to do all that next with basic washes here. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next step.